Okay. All right, let's get started. Okay, so today we're in the third session of the webinar series which is the seven critical steps to getting uh, the seven critical steps to starting your real estate investing business. All right. And uh, we talked about on the first session, we talked about the market and which market, how do you figure out which market you should be in, which area you should, you should be in. So if you missed that session, you can go back, you know, and if you're in a, and if you're in an area across the country where you're just like, I kind of just really don't know what, um, what area I should be focusing on, right? So that would be the perfect one for you. It's kind of the first thing, actually that's the first question that you ask is like, okay, which market should I be in, right? Where should I be focusing my energy on? And then the second series that we had last week was um, setting up your office, the structure of your companies, and then how to make your, um, how to make your company completely virtual electronic so that you can be like anywhere in the world and run your business, right? Especially since you're a real estate investor and um, you just, uh, you just don't know, like, um, you don't know like where you're going to be. You're always out driving for dollars or looking at properties or whatever. You want to be able to run your office from your phone. All right, so that's kind of what we talked about last week. And so this week, what we're going to be talking about is marketing strategies. And um, the marketing strategies, like we're going to get into, we're going to get into all the different ways that you can, uh, you can market to find properties right now. All right, that's going to be the goal for today is all the different ways that you can market to find properties. And, uh, you know, over the course of the next year, even a couple of years, there's gonna be some great opportunities. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of months, right? Because, you know, everything's kind of changing right now. But over the course of the next couple of years, there's going to be really a lot of good opportunities. But the only way you're, you're going to be able to take advantage of those opportunities is if you're marketing. And in fact, marketing is the backbone of your company. If you're not marketing, then you're not making any money. Right. And uh, I mean, essentially, that's for any company at all. That's for REI USA. That's for, um, you know, your investing business. That's for anything. Right. You should always be marketing. And I tell all of my students all the time is like, you don't have any deals. It's because you're not marketing. Like you cannot rely on the MLS to find properties. You just can't anymore. There's too many hands in the pot. And guess what? Guess who's buying all those houses up now? And they will be in the future, hedge funds. And it is very, very hard to compete with hedge funds, right? Because they just got so much money. And honestly, the truth is they don't even care what they're buying most of the time. They just got to spend the money, right? I've been in that position where I had so much money. I'm just like, let's just buy it, you know? And it's just, that's not a good position to be in. You don't, I mean, I know everybody says I want a lot of money, but the truth is, is that when you got all these like lenders breathing down your back, Ooh, that's stressful. So what you want, what you want to do is really kind of, like I said, focus on where you're going to be uh, marketing at. So you want to, you want to pick the market for your marketing, which is the, st the first webinar that we did. And then, and then from there, you can really start marketing. All right. And so now where I want to get into all the different marketing strategies that you should be focusing on right now uh, to build up your business, right? Now, the truth is, is that uh, there's a couple of, there's a couple of main points to, to marketing in a real estate investing world. Number one is that you've got to spend money to make money. You got to, all right? So there's no, there's no way that you can grow your real estate investing business by doing, by going only specifically onto Craigslist and looking for properties or handwriting bandit signs and putting them out by yourself, you know, 50, 50 bandit signs, like, you know, on a, on a weekend. So yeah, I totally get, totally get that there is, there are people out there saying like, you can write some bandit signs, you can go into Craigslist, free marketing, but essentially the way it works in the marketing world on the residential side, this is not the commercial on the residential side, because there's three different types of uh, marketing strategies. Well, there's, yeah, there's three different types of marketing strategies, okay? The first one is free marketing, free. The second one is, um, is direct mail marketing. And the third one is um, online marketing, 
online marketing. Okay, so there's three different ways for you to market to find leads right now. Okay. And it's just honestly, it's just three different ways. There's no wrong or right. There's no better or worse. It's just three different ways. Okay. Uh, the free under the free uh, marketing. There is um, several different ways that you can do it. And I just said, like, it's not really free, you know, because, uh, you know, you can, you have to go spend a little bit of money, but you can buy some bandit signs. Like I just said, you can hand write these bandit signs and then just drive around and stick them out, right? Pick, stick them on Friday and pick them up on Sundays. Okay. And you'll get leads. You'll totally get leads from this. Most of the time, it's going to be somebody like me calling and saying, hey, do you got any deals? Most of the time, I say 80% of the time, but 20% of the time you'll get like, you'll get random calls. Like, yeah, I am looking to sell my property. Okay. And, um, and so putting out bandit signs is a very, very inexpensive way to get property. Right now, remember when I say we have the three different types and we're going to go through all three types tonight. Remember, I so say you've got these three different types. There's going to be like a whole bunch of different strategies under each of those. Okay. There's a whole bunch of different strategies. So in the free marketing section, you've got bandit signs. It's free. You can put free or inexpensive, right? Is what you could put. You've got the bandit signs, right? And um, quite a few people do this, but um you know, it's really hard to find deals this way. It just is. There's just too many people trying to do this, too many people trying to teach the strategy, you know, like learn how to wholesale, throw out some banded signs and make some money, right? So essentially everybody tries to do this and it just rarely works. But you can always try if you don't have any money, that's what you would do. Number two is, like I said, Craigslist, Craigslist. Right. So um, you can go on to Craigslist and go and it doesn't matter what, you know, state you're in or what city you're in. Right. You can and you can go through every single one of the cities within the state. So just go to Craigslist and you'll see like within your state, you're going to automatically be directed to um, to your state. All right. But um, essentially, when you get to your state, you just go into every single one of the cities and then you open it up and there's like a for sale by owner section and then there's like a like a for sale by broker section right and so you can check both of them and just see like what you have there and see if there's anything that you want to buy there okay so that's that's another free way um and then also you can uh you can just make like a dummy ad which actually probably i would say most of the ads on if you see something like you know the the perfect deal most likely it's just some wholesaler with a dummy ad. Okay. Saying, um, you know, it'll say something like, you know, a uh, fixer upper for sale, you know, $50,000, $20,000 rehab cost. And uh, the ARV is $200,000. You'll just see like this, like beautiful, like you're like, this is the perfect deal. I need this. And most likely that's just like some wholesaler. That's like, and then you call them up and you're like, hey, I really want your deal. What, give me some more information. And then they're going to say, oh, I'm sorry, that one's already gone. But I can put your name on the, uh, on the list. I can put your name on my list and I can email you all of my uh, deals when I come across them. All right, so that's kind of how it works. But um, every once in a while, you'll, uh, you'll find some, some deals on Craigslist. I had a student in my, uh, in my mastermind that just like went in there like a week or two ago and was like, I'm just going to go through Craigslist and see if there's anything for sale. Uh, that was, it was a storage facility, but it was, there was a one storage facility for sale. He went through every single one of his cities within the state. And there was like one storage facility contacted him and got all the information and stuff. So and it was for sale by owner. So totally people do post properties for sale on Craigslist. So if you have the time or, you know, or the patience to sit there and go through that, that could possibly be a good way. Or what you could do is just hire a VA to do that for you. Like, I, I'm not going to sit there and go through Craigslist. 
you know, or I'm not going to sit there and, you know, go and drive bandit signs now out. But, you know, once you get into this, you can always hire a VA and say, look, your job is to get into this every day. Just get in and see if what's for sale. If there's any properties that would be viable or call up to all these people and then just put your name on the list. Because one of the ways for you to find properties for sale, which is a free way, is to work with other wholesalers right? So you want to be working with as many wholesale sellers as possible because most wholesalers are not good, all right? Because they're just not, they're not being educated properly, all right? So what they're going to do is just send you like some address that's like, hey, I got this deal under contract. Are you interested? And they'll just like text it out to you, right? So this is how like most wholesalers are. So, you know, or they'll email you some address and like not have any other in interest or anything. And it just basically says, do your own due diligence, which is not really like, it's not really what you should be doing, but this is just what people, this is some, some people teach this. So, um, but you know, what you want to do is just get on their list and also get on um, like all, every wholesaler that you meet, you want to get on their list so that you are getting their emails. Man, I remember at one time I was getting like a hundred emails a day from wholesalers trying to sell properties. And I would go through and look at every single one of them and, uh, you know, maybe put an offer, you know, go out and take a look, look at a couple of them, whichever ones I liked, right? But um, there's a whole lot of wholesalers in the world. So, you, but you, you know, you never know, you might come across a deal that is good for you and that's free. I mean, they're doing, supposedly they're doing all the work for you, right? Um, there's some really good wholesalers out there that will, I mean, they'll even, they'll run title. I mean, they'll be like, because if you run title beforehand, you know, as a wholesaler, you can close in a week if the person has the money. Right. I mean, you could close as fast as you want, because really the, the longest pr process of closing a deal is running the title. So there's a lot of really good wholesalers that know what they're doing. And when you talk to them, they'll say, I already ran title. And like we can literally close tomorrow if you wanted to close. Right. And so those are some those are kind of some more advanced wholesalers that really kind of know what they're doing. Um, and they'll send you like a whole wholesaling package with like pictures and videos and like anything that you need, they'll send it to you because they kind of know what they're doing. And then you got the other wholesalers that are like, just send you an address and have no idea what they're doing, right? But um, so that is another free way of finding properties is by getting on wholesalers list. And this is literally wholesalers on the commercial side or the residential side. If you come across a wholesaler that wholesales any type of property that you're interested in, just make sure you let them know like, hey, I really want to be on your list. Any property that you come across, just send it to me, get me, put you on your email list and um, put me on your email list. And that way I can take a look at it. And so that's a free way of finding properties, all right? Um, let's see, what's another free way? Another free way of, of finding properties is, um, is to partner, to partner with other, uh, you know, to partner with other uh, investors, right? So you could like, you know, you could offer some sort of a service you, you know, or you say like, look, I'll, I'll re, I'll, what if I manage the deal and you do the marketing and part, you know, partner up that way. Like if you don't have any money, this is the, this is like, if you don't have any money, partner up with somebody that has money and um, see if there's a way for you guys to do the marketing. That's like, you know, the money, the, the money, the, the marketing that actually costs money. And, um, and then you just manage the deals, you know, so, and I've seen this, this a lot, you know, like some people, I just don't have the money to do any marketing at all, but I will manage any deal. If anybody's interested, if you do the marketing and find the deal, you know, let's partner and I'll manage the whole rehab or whatever. So you can always partner if you want to do that. Okay. Um, let's see. We'll come, if I come up with any other ones, if you guys come up with any other ways to do free like to find any free, uh, to do free marketing strategies, just let me know, we can go over those, okay? But those are kind of like the most, the most popular ones. Um, now, the next, uh, the next strategy to finding deals is the direct mail strategy, okay? Direct mail. 
and direct mail is uh you gotta you gotta spend money to make money essentially and that's how it works right and uh you know i always say to my students i always say like a thousand dollars is a good budget a month to start out with see that's kind of expensive right it's kind it's really hard to send out 50 letters a week or a month and get a deal it just is okay so it just doesn't work especially nowadays i mean i remember when i first started back in like 2010 or 2011 whatever it was and i mailed out like 500 letters like my first time because i just was like oh, i'll just do 500 and i literally got like 50 or 60 calls it was awesome i was like i was running around like a crazy person so th that does not happen anymore okay so for instance like one of my students uh, just mailed out 1200 letters and got five calls all right so it's like people say like on average one percent he was in like a major metropolitan area so he, he wants to stay within the city so it's a little bit harder when you're in the metropolitan areas okay so maybe it's like not one percent it's half a percent essentially it came out to like half a percent for 1200 people and so he got kind of bummed out he's like i just spent 1200 dollars to mail letters out and i only got like five calls and i was like yeah that's how it works. That's how direct mail works. Like literally, it's just, you have to spend a lot of money on direct mail in order to make money on direct mail. That's just how it is. So um, 50, send, sending out 50 letters a week just, just ain't gonna cut it. Not right now, not in this market. Now it may work in some like, random small town like let's if it you know, with like a town of like five thousand, you might be able to mail out 50 letters and get some calls and stuff but like any i would say any primary or secondary markets it's going to be very very hard to get people to call you back right now okay primary and secondary so and that's why i always say i mean now is the time to be working on tertiary uh, tertiary like secondary to tertiary markets because you know there's affordable house housing crisis and people just like people can't aff afford to, uh, you know 250 plus right now on houses and they don't want to i mean everybody i mean i know several people right now you guys tell me if y'all have seen this but like one of our very good friends you know lives like and lived in like a 2000 square foot house and they're they're moving into like a thousand square foot house right now they're cutting back and you're going to start seeing this more and more and more people just don't want to waste their money on a mortgage they want to have enough money for expenses to live all right so um and there's there's a, and there's not enough affordable houses in any major metro area right now there's just not like metro cities so there people are moving out to secondary and tertiary markets and that's just how the market works it's a it's a cycle Right. So in like a couple of years, when the might, when this, when the, when the marking come, you know, when the, when the market comes back, everybody's gonna be like, I'm going back to the city, you know, but, um, but right now people are just like, they don't want to be around each other. Number one. And number two, like they just can't afford it. You know, you can afford a thousand dollars a month, but you can't afford $2,000 a month. You know, that's a lot of money. That's a thousand dollars is a lot of money for people right now. So focusing on secondary depending on where you're at like i saw somebody said they're in chicago so chicago is obviously a primary market and the secondary market would be like the burbs of chicago right all the burbs of chicago and then the tertiary markets is gonna be like the country like outside of chicago illinois and um and then you know down into ohio and indiana and all that you know where you know where that that highway comes across. I can't remember what that number of that highway is. You know what I'm talking about. But the one that just cuts across like Ohio to Indiana. Or in, is, it, is it through Illinois? Anyway, is it, I just drove that highway. So we kind of have an idea of how it is over there. And um, so you're going to have to go out. You got to go out into these, these are tertiary markets, especially if you live in a city. Like if you live in Chicago, I highly recommend that you're in like a tertiary, the tertiary markets, right? Because even the secondary market's going to be like super expensive. And people are moving out, out far. Let me know if y'all have seen this, where y'all are at. Where are y'all at? Uh, anyways, well, I'm getting to that. Sorry, I know I'm just rambling, Louise. But um anyway so direct mail marketing is a wonderful wonderful way to get deals 
if you have money. You got to have some money, honey. All right. My personal opinion, at least a thousand dollars a month, if not more, a thousand dollars a week would be awesome or a thousand dollars every two weeks. Right. So what my students, they're all doing a thousand dollars every two weeks and they're not even getting that many calls. Like they'll do a thousand letters every two weeks and they'll get like maybe, I think maybe 20 or 30 calls from that, from the month, from the entire month. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a 1%, a one to 2% ratio and that's it. It's just hard. So with direct mail marketing, okay. Um, you have two different types of uh, sellers that you're focusing on. Okay, you're focusing on uh, motivated sellers or unmotivated sellers. Motivated or unmotivated. Okay, so motivated sellers are going to be um, foreclosures, pre foreclosures, uh, bankruptcy, divorce, tax liens. Um, let me see what else. What can you think of? What, who are some motivated sellers? Okay. Motivated is like, I got to get this done within the next two to four weeks, right? Essentially, because I'm about to lose my house or whatever, you know, something like that. That's a motivated seller list. Okay. And then you also have an unmotivated seller list. And the unmotivated seller list is, um, is like probate and uh inherited properties free and clear properties um let's see what else um landlords all right a motivated a motivated seller would probably be like code violations but an unmotivated seller is going to be like vacant land or like vacant you know vacant property that's just been sitting there forever or whatever you know so um so just remember that you have to distinguish between which seller you're trying to target, which seller. And then you come up with the, you, you have to buy the list from a list broker, right? You get the list from the list broker or you get it from like, you know, PropStream or any of these like CRMs now. Like if you go into um, REI USA, go into the members portal and click on the partners section you'll have access to all these CRMs, right? You can figure out which one you want to do. And they all have trial periods. And the trial period, it's either like two weeks or a month, okay? And um, so you'll click on that. And then you can try out like RealFlow, FreedomSoft, REI Pro, PropStream, um, you know, all these types of like CRM kind of databases, and they all have access to lists. All right. So you can now are they good list, lists? I don't know. You know, you can tell whether or not a list or is a good list by how many uh, letters come back. You know, you know, is it like 50% that the letters are coming back like undeliverable? Well, that's a sucky list. Right, but if like 10% is good, like I get my list from a list broker. And there's two list brokers that are sponsors of REI USA. So if you go into the sponsors directory, you will find Karen and Deanna's information and you can talk to both of them about lists. Okay. And so I always buy from a list broker because I feel like a list broker, I mean, they send, they take the time to figure out which list is right for you. Like it's a person that you can talk to and you can like bounce strategy and ideas off and stuff. All right. So I like list brokers and you'll see more and more list brokers as sponsors. We're working on a couple more as well too, but essentially those are the two that we have right now. And they're both all actually phenomenal. So I would talk to just both of them and, um, and they're nationwide. So you can just talk to them and just get some information. Um, but you get your, you get your list from a list broker and it's, it's not cheap to buy a list. But you do get a lot of names, right? So you'll, when you buy a list, you're going to get like three, four, five thousand names. So essentially, if you get absentee owners, absentee owner is an unmotivated list, and you'll buy like five thousand names, and then you'll send out like you know maybe once every couple of weeks, you'll send out 
a thousand names. And so it lasts you like two months and you can touch that same list like probably four or five times, honestly. Like most of my students are doing touches of like four times on the same list. And, um, and then you hire a fulfillment company, right? And the fulfillment company is who's sending out those letters for you automatically. Now, if you get if you if you get those lists in those um, CRMs, like PropStream or um, REI Pro or whatever those are, then uh, I think they automatically do that for you. It usually comes out to about a dollar a letter. Okay, so, so you know, so the list is going to cost you for like three to five thousand names, depending on the list. It's going to cost you around a thousand dollars. Okay, depending on what the list is, this is for, for that many names. And then you send it over to a fulfillment company and the fulfillment company will fulfill that list for you. And it costs probably about a dollar a letter is what it costs, right? Because the stamp costs like 55 cents. And then they help you to pick out your letters. Right. So then they have like all different kinds of letters. So like my student, a lot of my students, they'll pick a letter out and, and make sure you talk. If you don't talk to REI print mail, you can, there's a lot of, and you'll see more and more like um, print companies that come up as sponsors as well too. But essentially like you can talk to any print company, but like, I really like REI print mail for a couple of things for, for a couple of reasons. And they'll be doing a webinar like in February or March sometime too. But the reason I like REI print mail, so when you look for your print, mail companies number one is they have a text number for you a text so they you can you can have them you know email you call you or text you and they have like a number that they give you and an email that they give you that's like kind of in their system and then you log into the system and then you have that all like right there to be managed is what it is like a back office system and then on top of that they keep track of all your kpis what's a kpi does anybody know what a KPI is? I'm gonna take a drink. Put it in the chat if you know what a KPI is. Yeah, Nobody? Am I putting you all to sleep? A KPI is a key performance indicator. Thank you, Christy. A KPI is a key performance indicator. And um, so um, like what that is essentially is like a spreadsheet and it, like you keep track, like it'll keep track of all the letters that are sent out and then like who is like when they're sent out and like if there's any text messages or emails or anything like that, you get to see like, you know, and all the like the um, the tracking points right of that mail uh, drop. Okay. And then you can get in there also and you can finish out that spreadsheet by adding your own KPIs, right? So who called, you keep track and say, oh, this person called and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to follow up in two days and I'm making an offer on this house and you can see like how many offers you made. So it's like this kind of like this, a KPI is like a master spreadsheet where you just keep track of all your numbers because in uh, marketing, right? You have to keep track of your numbers. You need some sort of a master spreadsheet to keep track. Like if you're doing the bandit signs and the free stuff and the, you know, it's like, okay, which one's working? Ba my bandit signs are working. I've got 10 calls off my bandit signs. Craigslist, I found three properties off of Craigslist and I put in an offer for each of those or whatever it is like and then you just have this like master spreadsheet where you're keeping track of all your marketing strategies which are working and which are not that's called a kpi okay so you definitely want to have this all right i'm a master i'm like a i call them a master sheet but i'm a i'm a spreadsheet person if you're in my mastermind you know that like i've got a lot of spreadsheets but um so you want to keep track of that. And that's why I like REI print mails because they kind of help you with your KPIs. And a lot of fulfillment companies do this. Postal Impact is, an is another, um, is another uh, fulfillment company that will become a sponsor, but you have to mail 10,000 letters a month with them. So they're like high level. Um, but that's like, if you want to get some stuff done, that's like, that's the company that you do, right? 
And let's see what else. So they like most of these really good fulfillment companies that can fulfill the list that you purchased from a list broker or wherever you get your list, then essentially they um, they can help you track your KPIs. If that makes that's all that should make sense for everybody, right? Say yes, it makes sense, okay? Uh, which is kind of a hand, it's a kind of a mouthful, but um. So you have your motivated sellers and you have your unmotivated sellers. Okay, so for instance, like landlords, absentee owner, inherited property, probate, those are going to get completely different letters than your motivated seller, right? So your, your unmotivated seller, like you don't want to rush them. You don't want to, you want to connect. You want to build rapport, right, with a landlord. You don't want to just send them some letter that's, a, you know, a letter that says, let me buy your house for cash. Right. Whereas on the motivated side, you could say in the letter, it would say something like we buy high, we buy houses for cash, any size, any condition, foreclosure, not or not, you know, divorce, bankruptcy, any type of situation, all we'll buy your house cash and we can close in the next two weeks. Right. So it'd be something like that, like just very to the point and that you just you don't make it specific like, hey, I know that you're going through foreclosure right now. Sell me your house. Right. Because then they'll be like, no. Right. But you make it kind of generic and you let them know like, hey, look, I'll buy your house any situation. And then you just list the situations out because I think like if they see like bankruptcy, foreclosure, pre foreclosure, um, you know, whatever. Uh, all the different types of, you know, divorce. If you see these words, they're like, oh, divorce. Yes, I'm going through divorce. I should definitely call this person and talk to him because I might lose my house or whatever, or we're trying to figure it out. So then it kind of triggers their mind, right? So I, I like in my motivated letters, I like to, um, I like to list those out, but in a generic kind of way. Okay. Makes sense. Capiche, put capiche. If you're lost, let me know. And then on the unmotivated side, it's like just, it's like, a, it's not a personal letter, but it's like, it's a longer letter that's more has like a person, personal niche. Our letters that we send out, we actually put a picture of our family on it. Is that what's, that's what we do for all the, un, for the motivated, for the unmotivated ones. We're like, hey, just so you know, hey, my name is Stacy Rossetti. My husband is Pete. My daughter's Lillian. We're a family owned business. And uh, we live right here in the area and we're looking for a property uh, to buy in this area. We're very interested in your property. And then I'll just smack like some sort of a, um, like a picture of us, like, you know, and you don't have to do that if you don't want to, you don't feel like, you know, safe or whatever, but uh, it works. Make it personal, make the unmotivated letters very, 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 very personal. Okay. And um, it just works. That's what they want. They want to know, like, and trust you. The motivated sellers, the ones that are having problems, they want you to solve your problem, right? We solve, put in your letter, we solve problems or we solve ugly problems. Let me buy your house for cash. These are all the types of houses that we buy that, from the situation and then put it in there. Let them trigger that. And then on the mot unmotivated side, it's like, Hi, I'm your best friend. I like long walks on the beach. You know, my dog Sparky and I love long walks on the beach or whatever, something like this. Like some people even put like, like a picture with you and them and their, their dog or something. And because then they'll call up and they'll say, and then before I got married to Pete, I used to put like, hey, my, my fiance Pete and I are looking for a house to buy in your area. We drove by your house. We saw it and we love it, but not, whether or not we did or not. And then they always think like, oh yeah, you saw my house, you know, but, um, but, but like what we put that in and then we, I would get these voicemails like, like, Hey, you called me your fiance, you and your fiance are looking for a house. You called me. I mean, you, you yelled me and mailed me a letter. Give me a call back. They just love that whole like special touch is what they love. Right. Something that's like, you're a human being, right? So that's my, my two cents on the types of letters that you should be mailing out. Now, also what we do is we do, um, we do color, we either do colored envelopes or we do like half size manila envelopes, right? But we'll do color, most of the time we'll do colored envelopes. Like we'll have like a pink, a purple, a yellow, a green, a black or whatever, you know. And then we have a marker. We have actually, we use um, 
we use gel markers. You know those like jelly markers? Has anybody heard of this jelly markers? Like that's what we use. We use the jelly markers. So my office manager, she writes with these like jelly markers and then she'll draw like a little like flower on the envelope or something. That's what she does. I told her, I was like, put a little cute design on the envelope, like a flower. And so we'll do like a green envelope with like a red marker and like, you know, some sort of flower. And then we'll write, we'll hand write the, let the envelopes out, hand write them. Okay. The, the letter inside is printed. All right, so letters just printed and it's a green or a black or orange or a purple yellow uh, envelope. These envelopes are a little bit more expensive, right? And now, if you go to a fulfillment company, you have to ask them if they do something like this. If you're gonna do it yourself, like we are, we do everything in-house is how we do it. Uh, um, because I've been doing it in-house for 10 years. But um, if you, so if you do it in-house, definitely use a colored envelope or use a, like a half size manila envelope. All right. So for instance, like the land letters that we send out land letters, land, we just do a manila envelope in a half size. So she just folds it in half and sticks it in. And then she uses the jelly markers to write the, the address on it. Right. And our gel markers or whatever they're called. Okay, so you want to like, you want to think outside the box. If you use a fulfillment company, they also do things like this as well too. They have like a printer that makes it like look like it's handwritten stuff as well. And that's kind of what you want on the envelope. And then you can, you can use different color envelopes or you can use a regular envelope, but you definitely want to have that handwritten look on the outside. Now for us, for the letters that we send out, we use um, just like a label with our mailing address on it. So if it goes, if it gets sent back, it goes to the mailing address. Okay. And, um, and that's kind of how we do our letters. And then what happens is like with each list that you buy, like at one point we were doing like five lists. We have like, we have two or three lists right now. And so the reason we switch to the colored envelopes is because we just utilize that to keep track of which list was calling the most. So when somebody calls, we always ask like, what colored envelope do you get? And if they say like a black or a red or a purple, we know exactly what list we're mailing out to because they always remember the, um, the color of the envelope. Like I say, oh, can, you, can I just ask you, do you remember what it color the envelope was? Was it, was it orange, yellow, or green? And like, oh, it was green. And then you say, okay, green. Okay, I know this is an absentee owner, All right? So kind of that's how we kept track of it. And then we put it on our KPI absentee owner right here. And that's how we kept track of it. So that's why we switched to the colored envelopes or the different size envelopes for the letters, all right? So definitely if you have, if you can uh, manage that or afford that, I would highly recommend doing that as well too. It just keeps everything nice and simple. And the open rate of cover of colored envelopes just works so much better, right? Um, let's see what else about, I think, can anybody think of any questions or anything about marketing for uh, direct mail marketing that they have? All right, so direct mail marketing is the way to go. And, and how many, every says, how many touches do you need? I mean, essentially we do a, we do one list and then we just touch it again and we'll do like four, well, we'll do four or five touches is what we're seeing. And it, honestly, it takes, sometimes it, it takes a good couple of touches for people to even call you. Now, another thing that we do too. So now you bought this list, all right? This list is a lot of data. You just bought it, it costs you a thousand dollars. It's not just for you to mail out, right, to, all right? So you can skip trace that list. You can use like what's called a batch, batch skip tracing company. And the batch skip tracing companies will charge you like, I don't know, one or two or three cents per name. So whatever it is, this doesn't cost a lot of money to skip trace, like, you know, a, a thousand names or a couple thousand names. And you can skip trace all that. And then what they'll do is they'll give you the, um, the phone number of that list. And sometimes they'll even give you the email. If you can get the email and the phone number, even better right? Find a skip tracing company. I know American Tracers. I use American Tracers. Um, well, actually, we, we have a couple different companies I'll talk about, but Ameri and then there, if you go to the partner section, American Tracers is there, but American Tracers definitely gives you emails. 
Okay, now it's a little bit more expensive. I think it's like it's cheaper to just do text to do phone numbers. And if you want emails, it's a little bit more expensive, something like that. Okay. But um, it's not that expensive. And uh, so you can buy that you can get that entire list skip traced. All right. And then you have even more data. Right. So you can have the text message. You can you can uh, call them. Right. And if you, you can do like um, I never do this, but you can do like the robo dial or like the um, like the, the, the mojo dialer where it just calls one after another. If somebody picks up, then you talk to it. Right. Something like that. Or you can just like manually call them if you want to manually call them. It costs a little bit of money to do like these dialers and then I, they may be banned. Who knows, uh, you know, later. But right now you can still do them. But you can call the entire list and see if anybody picks up. And it doesn't take that long to call like a thousand people's, people anymore. Uh, number one. Number two is like, it, and then if they don't pick up, right, you can have it to where it, it's, it leaves a voicemail automatically. Those are called voice blasts or voicemail blast or whatever. And so you can use these companies like Mojo Dialer or Call Fire or um, Robo Dialer or whatever, these types of companies. You can find these in the partner section in the RIA, uh, I'm sorry, in the REI USA uh, members portal, okay? And um, and so you can just automatically call all those people pretty quick and you can talk to them on the phone if they answer the phone. You can leave a voicemail if they don't answer the phone, right? And you can actually, you can text message them as well. You can do text blasts. You can take that whole phone number, upload it to Call Fire or mobile texts or whatever text texting company out there. There's like a bazillion of them right now. And then... Um, and then you can just do like a text blast, like, hey, you know, I'm interested in, um, I'm interested in buying your property. Would you be interested in talking to me about it? And just see if anybody writes back. So you'll get a whole bunch of messages. Like I have one, I have one of my students, he's like, he only wants to do text blast. That's it. That's he doesn't want to call or anything. So he just does text blast and he does like thousands of them. And he says he gets text, but he gets like middle fingers and poop emojis and stuff like that. You know, he gets like people like screw, you know, screw off and scram and like all this kind of stuff. He's, so it's funny, but every once in a while he'll get somebody like, yes, I, you know, I have been thinking about selling my property. Right. And um, so he'll talk to them. And I mean, actually he'll do like, and you know, he'll do a couple hundred a week and he'll get a couple of calls from that that are actually like good viable leads for text messaging. So what I'm saying is that when you buy that list, right, you have a lot of data there. So it may cost you some money to get a list. And then actually you could even get a list with like find a broker that will give you a list with phone numbers and emails out there. If you can find one, let me know because I'll see if they want to become a partner and we can work together. I haven't found like a list broker that does all of that like you usually have to get the list skip trace the list and maybe it's like by law you can't do that i'm not sure but essentially you get the list skip skip trace the list and then you um and then you can like you can mail them a, you mail them a letter you leave you call them you leave a voicemail you text message you can even do a voice blast if you want. Like, you know how you sometimes get those phone calls where it's like you answer it and they're like, hello. And they're like, hey, my name is Stacy Rossetti and I'm the owner of REI USA. I think you should join REI USA because it's the best community in the whole world. Just go to reiusa.com. You know, something like that, right? You know what I'm going to talk about, right? So you can do that as well. You can do a voice blast, right? And uh, I used to do a lot of voice blasts, um, but I just haven't done them in a while. It's a little bit more expensive than a text blast, okay? But, um, but text blasts are usually anywhere from like three to five cents, and a voicemail is maybe like five to seven cents or something like that per phone number. But, um, but yeah, so that is, um, that's another way. And then you can get the, if you get the email, then you can email out to them as well too. Because the truth of the matter is, is that like for all these lists that you're getting and to do marketing to, like you have no idea how these people communicate. And the truth of the matter is nowadays, like there's so many different ways to communicate with each other that you literally have to touch every, but you guys know this because y'all see me, Right. I'm doing emails, I'm doing text messages, we're doing social media, we're on every single platform. I just did Clubhouse last night. 
my, my, my whole team is going crazy because we're doing like everything, right? Because the truth of the matter is, is that every single time that we, we, we go in front of a, an audience, it's a completely different audience, right? Because people just kind of have their thing. Like some people are Twitter people, some people Instagram, some people Facebook. And it's the same thing with like communication through direct mail marketing, right? Some people, they like this letter. Some people, they just like a text message. They like a voicemail and they'll call you back and they want an email, right? So get that list, buy it, and then skip trace it and get all that information from it. And then utilize that information by doing, that's five different ways that you can market to one person just by that one list that you get. So yeah, it may cost a little bit of money, but that's five strategies. And the truth of the matter is, is really in real estate investing, you need at least three to five strategies going at all at the same time, all at the same time. All right. So you want to just think about that, you know? So like, for instance, us and my business, we're driving for storage. We're, we're mailing letters out. We're doing text blasts and we're emailing right? So we're doing all this. We're doing like a whole bunch of different ways to find facilities to buy. And for you, for the properties that you're looking for, you should be doing this as well too. Three to five strategies consistently, right? And that's the key in marketing is consist consistency. Are you being consistent in your marketing? So this is not like, I just like my, one of my students, he just mailed out 1200 letters, got five calls and he's like totally bummed. And I'm like, what? I mean, did you skip trace the letter? Did you get the emails? Did you get the phone numbers? I was like, are you going to redo it, redo that letter, redo that list again? I mean, what are you doing with this data that you bought? Because just mailing out one time a letter is only like 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.05% of like, you know, the, uh, you know, the strategy, I mean, of the, of the amount of people that are going to call you, you know what I'm saying? So definitely you have to do a lot of, a lot of different types of marketing strategies and in direct mail marketing, you can really kind of encompass all that uh, by, uh, by that one list. Okay. And you can get lists off of any of these CRMs. It might not be a 5,000 list, but maybe a hundred lists or 200 lists. I'm not sure how all those work because I don't use those, but um, I know you can get lists like from FreedomSoft and PropStream and all this now, REI Pro. I know they all do this. Real Flow does this as well. Okay. See, back in the day when I started, like, you know, when I started in 2010, there was no, like, there was no CRMs. Like, they had all gone, if there were some before the bust, like the, the bubble, then they had all just gone bust, right? So when I started out, like, there was nothing out there. Nobody really had made it through, right? And so we were just like Google, I mean, we were just like spreadsheets. That's all we did. That's how we kept track of everything. And, our, and my business was just through, like, Google Sheets. And I just kind of got in that habit and I just never, I never kicked it. So now I'm just like, a, I'm a spreadsheet person. But, you know, if, if we would have had some sort of like awesome software now that, you know, can manage your entire company, it's like, why not just use that? So for instance, on our storage facilities, we started like five years ago with the storage facilities and we just got like, we went into, we, when we bought a facility, we got this like property management company, I'm sorry, property management software to manage all of our storage facilities. And so now we just manage them through the software and it's like, it's awesome, right? Cause we're managing all these properties this way, you know, but like people that have had storage facilities for 10 or 20 years, they don't have any property management software. They're not changing. It's kind of like me with my Google sheets, right? Like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm too old for that. I can't do that anymore. Same concept with like, you know, property managers or, you know, you know, or people like me see. So anyways, okay. Um, Finally, the last section is the online marketing section. That's the online marketing strategies. And this is my favorite way to do marketing. I am an online marketing person. I love it. Now, hear me out. I do all the marketing strategies. I do everything, right? Because you have to do everything in order to make it work. But my favorite way to get leads, my favorite way to market is through online marketing. And honestly, the truth is, is real estate investors do not do this. And there is a huge opportunity to make money in real estate investing through online marketing. You just have to educate yourself on how to do this, right? And uh, just like, you know, just like anything else that you learn, I mean, that there's a learning curve to do it, but we are partners with, with a couple of different companies, but there's companies out there, for instance, like Carrot. 
C-A-R-R-O-T. Carrot is a, um, it's an on, it's an, it's an online marketing company for real estate investors. And what they do is you create your website through them and then you start doing your SEO through them and they start sending you leads, right? So you just pay for like the area that you want to be in and then they'll send you any lead and they are a marketing syndication company a marketing syndication company. So essentially you just like pay a monthly fee and how the more that you pay, the more leads you're going to get essentially. But um, it's like, it's, I think it starts like a thousand dollars a month, right? So this is not like cheap. It's just like direct mail. You got to spend a little money to, um, to do this, but essentially you'll get like a certain, and they, they guarantee you a certain amount of leads every single month based on how much you spend. And I know Many, many, many investors that use companies like Carrot, Carrot's not the only company, but companies like Carrot that start their business up, right? And they just utilize Carrot, they get all their SEO, they get everything all set up, and then they just get leads coming to them. Now, the difference between like a, a carrot and like direct mail marketing is that carrot is like what they're going to do, what people do. I mean, the truth of the matter is, is like if they need to sell their house, they're going to be Googling, how do I sell my house fast? Right. And they'll say something like, and then you'll have these key words like sell my, you know, sell my house fast, uh, Atlanta or something like this. You'll have these key words. Okay. And you buy these keywords and those keywords are yours. And if they, that's how kind of SEO works, right? But essentially if they say like sell house fast Atlanta, you would be the one that comes up, you know, at the top of the list and then they would fill out your form. And they're probably filling out probably the top like three or four or five forms, right? Something like this, but you would get that lead and, and then you could call them right? And then you just call them. And the thing about it is, is that instead of you buying a list of 5,000 names and mailing out 5,000 letters, right? And just crossing your fingers that somebody calls you. Instead, what you do is you just, um, you just pay for those leads that are coming to you. Usually it costs about a hundred dollars a lead, something like that. Okay. And um, that's why I said, so with a thousand dollars, you'll probably get like 10 leads. But the thing is, is those leads are like, probably the best leads that you're ever going to get. Like if you can't click the people, people are calling you and telling you that they want to sell your house. Right. And they want to sell it now. They're in an issue. There's an issue with them selling their house. Right. And so those are the leads that, um, that you can really work and deal with. And this, like this type of online marketing, the way that this is set up is, is actually really, really good for like people that have full-time jobs too, as well. Right. So, because essentially you call them back when you have time. Whereas with direct mail marketing, like you should be answering that phone, right? Because if they don't need to sell their house, they need to sell that house now. So you have to have some sort of a way to answer that phone immediately, run comms, get out there, take a look at it, especially nowadays, because there is so much competition out there. Whereas it's different with the online marketing. The online marketing is kind of like you can get that lead in during the day. And then the evening when you're done with your job, you can just give them a call or whatever, you know? And, you know, and also I filled those things out. Like when you get in and fill a form and then they call you back like immediately. I mean, that is so annoying, right? I think I did like one healthcare thing where I was like, yeah, I need some healthcare. And I had like 20 people call me back within like, you know, five minutes. So you don't want to be like in the online marketing world. You don't want to be like that. Whereas in the direct mail marketing, this is kind of like, you need to be answering that phone. You know what I'm saying? So it's two different ways of marketing. It's two different ways of doing it. Most people opt for the, um, the direct mail marketing because guess why? Because it's the easiest way. But guess what? Most people go the easiest route. The hard route where you're going to get the better leads is going to be online marketing and going with some sort of a syndication company that can create a website for you and help you through SEO. And honestly, I have a, I have a lot of really good uh, friends that are... Um, investors that do it this way and they're just like rocking and rolling because like it takes probably it takes a little while for you to get it and click but once you start getting those leads in and try you know you start getting like these the same types of leads and you're like okay this is and that's the thing with with online marketing is that you don't know what type of leads going to come across your plate you know you have no idea what's going to come in because it's just somebody that's like look i need to sell my property now okay so those are really the three strategies right free direct mail marketing and online marketing. 
on the online marketing, like, I mean, there's, there's like, you can do Facebook ads also as well too. And, um, and you'll see, you will have um, some teachers that come in later and teach on like Facebook ad marketing, Google AdWords marketing, PPP, PPC and stuff. But I'm telling you like, why not just go with one of these like turnkey companies that do that for you? So for instance, like in the self storage world, we have a marketing company that we pay that's a syndication, it's a, it's a, it's a storage syndication marketing company and they market for us, right? For storage facility owners. And we just pay like, you know, a fee for them to do that and they do all the work. So we don't have to sit there and like do all the Facebook marketing and stuff like that. So it's kind of the same concept, like this company that you, that you get with and you pay them this monthly fee, their job is to feed you leads. All right. And that's it. All right. Okay, guys, keep. Okay. So we'll see you next Wednesday is the next is this seven critical steps is next Wednesday, but um, there's so many other uh, uh, events on the calendar. So please go to the calendar within the members portal and register for any event that you're interested in any webinar or training. Okay, you have to register in the members portal. And hopefully y'all will show, show up for the, the badass summit this weekend. It's a three day woman, three days woman, uh, woman investor. It's all it is is like 30 women getting in and just teaching. And guess what? You can be a dude and come to this thing. All right. This is not just only ladies. All right. Dudes can also listen to us. All right. I promise. Now, Cause I see a lot of ladies signing up. But I see like only very little men. It's like, we don't want to scare y'all off, you know, come listen to us. All right. Okay. Take care. And I will see you soon. All right. Bye.